Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Build a Cisco SD Access Fabric Wide Fabric Roll Provisioning. In this episode, we'll explain what are fabric sites and what are fabric rolls in the context of the SD Access architecture. We'll then go to demonstration and build a wired SD Access fabric. If you want more information about the video series, please do go back and review episode one for an orientation. As you'll see when we get to the demonstration, to some degree, this episode does build on the work that's been performed in earlier episodes. If you want full context, you'll need to go back and watch those earlier episodes. Or if you just want to know about wired fabric roll provisioning, then please proceed with this episode. Briefly, what is a network fabric? It is a full mesh of connections between networking infrastructure that is providing connectivity services to endpoints, such as PCs, printers, IoT devices, and even external routing domains like data centers or internet services. Usually that full mesh is made up of virtualized connections, and certainly that's the case with SD Access, where you can have one, hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands of networking devices. A fabric is preferable to a traditional network design because fabric offers better services, reliability, mobility, flexibility, and scalability. A fabric site is an instance of an SD Access fabric. In the SD Access architecture, you can have one fabric site or you can have thousands of fabric sites. A fabric site is a logical boundary. You can have multiple fabric sites in a single campus or you can have multiple campuses in a single fabric site. Often the boundary of a fabric site is defined by a geographical location. Say I have a branch in city one and I have a branch in city two. That's usually best deployed as two separate fabric sites. However, boundaries of fabric sites can also be defined by other criteria. Say I have 300,000 endpoints. I wouldn't put 300,000 endpoints in a single fabric site. I may create three fabric sites of 100,000 each. RTT between fabric nodes is also important. If you have a high latency link between two fabric nodes, Typically, that would be a reason to split them into separate fabric sites. The RTT requirements of SD Access are defined in the Catalyst Center datasheet. Underlay connectivity attributes may also play a role. Say we have the internet or a low MTU link between different fabric elements, then they may be split into different fabric sites. Defining the most appropriate boundaries for your fabric site is not something we'll discuss in this episode but there is other resources such as ciscolive.com where there's plenty of design content, the SD Access CVD on cisco.com, and of course, your local SD Access subject matter expert. Within a fabric site, we provision fabric roles. There is both mandatory and optional roles within the SD Access architecture. The mandatory components include Cisco Catalyst Center, that is where we configure our intent, and that intent is provisioned into the managed network infrastructure. There is fabric border nodes. A border node connects an SD Access fabric site to an external routing domain, and a control plane node is also required. A control plane node keeps track of what endpoints are connected into the SD Access fabric in what location. There is quite a list of optional components for SD Access Fabric. Identity Services Engine is optional, but it is recommended because it brings a lot of capabilities around micro segmentation, network access control, and endpoint profiling. Fabric Wireless Controller and Fabric APs are optional, but highly recommended. The integration of SD Access Wired Fabric and Wireless Fabric is automated through the Catalyst Center SD Access interface, offering a common unified wired and wireless management interface, a common unified segmentation policy, and a higher performance with distributed wireless data plane. 
In some migration scenarios, some customers choose to deploy the wired fabric first and then add fabric enabled wireless afterwards as a second migration. And other customers choose to deploy both SD access wired and wireless fabric at the same time. Fabric edge nodes are access switches to which we connect wired devices like PCs, printers, cameras, and the like, and also to which we connect fabric APs if they're present in the network. SD access also includes extended nodes. Extended nodes are a layer two switch that home to fabric edge nodes. Typically an extended node is some sort of specialist switch like an industrial ethernet switch where it is capable of tolerating harsh operating environments such as roadsides, factory floors, manufacturing facilities, warehouses, and the like. Intermediate nodes do not participate in the SD access fabric. They provide routing and link aggregation to interconnect different fabric roles. There is no correct number of intermediate nodes. You can have zero or a hundred or a thousand. The quantity you use is defined by your routing and cabling requirements, which obviously varies from network to network. Now, if you've watched the whole video series, you're probably tired of hearing this. I think I'm going to remove this slide after this episode. I'll just say it one more time. Please be aware that there is a recommended iOS XE version for any given platform functioning in a fabric role at a moment in time. Please do visit the compatibility matrix periodically. The URL is on screen there. It is updated as time progresses. If there's any questions about what's been presented here in these slides, please do feel free to post a question on communities or talk to one of our most capable partners, sales representatives or CX representatives. All right, let's get into the demonstration. Beginning with the Catalyst Center landing page, we go to Hamburger Menu, Provision, Inventory. Here we see all of the devices that we discovered, zero touch onboarded and provisioned in the previous episode. And of course, in this demonstration, we'll be adding SD access roles to these devices. Before we can add roles, we need a fabric site. We go to hamburger menu, provision, and then fabric sites. Across the top, we have a summary bar telling us what fabric is provisioned right now. As we can see, there is no fabric sites and there is no devices in fabric. So the first thing we need to do is create a fabric site. In this screen, we choose where the fabric site will begin. I'll just unfold these menu options quickly to illustrate a point. As I said earlier, a fabric site can contain multiple locations or a location can contain multiple fabric sites. It's an important design decision that you need to make before beginning your SD access fabric. So here I could create a fabric site at the AU level and it might incorporate all of these cities, Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney, or I could create the site at Melbourne, or I could create the site at building one in Melbourne, or level one, and so on. In this case, it's my intention to create a fabric site representing the city of Melbourne. When I choose Mel, the fabric site will include anything provisioned to Mel, or any network hierarchy level below Mel. We click Next. Here we're given some information about wired endpoint data collection in the fabric site. It's required to properly register endpoints to the SD access fabric and to perform assurance on those endpoints. It's not optional, so we'll click next. We're now asked to choose an authentication template for the fabric site. This represents the default configuration on all of the access switch ports. So we could have no authentication, none, low impact, open or closed auth. We'll choose closed authentication and click next. Here we're asked to set up fabric zones. They are not mandatory, they're optional. So for now we will not set them up and we'll come back in a future video to explore the concept of fabric zones. 
fabric zones can be added later to the network. They don't have to be established now. We'll click next. We get a summary screen of our fabric site creation decisions. They're all fine. So again, we'll click next. And now we need to go ahead with scheduling the fabric site creation. There's some pre-checks they've passed. We'll skip past those. There's configuration preview, which is not applicable in this case since fabric site creation does not affect network infrastructure. We'll click submit. And in a moment, we get this pop-up saying fabric site creation completed. We can now exit the workflow. Across the top now, we can see in the summary bar, there is one fabric site. If we scroll down, we can also see a table view summarizing our fabric sites. We'll click on the fabric site name to enter that fabric site and begin administering it. Here we have a topology view of the network infrastructure in inventory, which is not yet provisioned to fabric. That's why the devices are white and gray. We'll select our first switch, turn on the border roll, enable layer three handoff. That makes this a layer three border. And if we note the checkboxes below that, default to all virtual networks and do not import external routes, that will mean this device is going to be an external border node, a default route for the SD access fabric. The local AS number for BGP is pre-populated. It was read in by Catalyst Center. If you recall in the previous video, we started BGP manually on this device in order to make it discoverable. We click add and we'll also make this a control plane node along with border node. We choose control plane node. The default choice is Lisp PubSub, which is our latest and preferred control plane architecture. We'll leave it as our preferred architecture and choose add, add again. Now we choose our other switch. It also will be a border node with layer three handoff. We'll add that, we'll turn on control plane node. We're not prompted for a control plane architecture in this case. It must be the same as the previous choice. So it will also be list pub sub. Click add. Now I'll adjust this topology view slightly to remove the overlapping lines. As you can probably tell from the host names, I intend to have four edge nodes. Two are directly attached to the border and control planes. One is in a daisy chain attached to edge node two and edge node four is dual attached to intermediate nodes. We'll go ahead and start choosing the edge node role for these switches. So we click on switch one, turn on edge node role, add, switch two, edge node role, add, and unsurprisingly, switch three and switch four will be the same procedure again. We can now see with the badges applied to these devices, the proposed SD access fabric rolls that will be provisioned to them. I'm happy with this, so I click deploy. We choose to deploy now. We get our pre-checks, they all pass, next. Next, we get configuration previews. We're not going to be reviewing line by line CLIs in this video. So we'll choose submit. And then we get a pop-up saying the provisioning task has successfully been deployed. And after a little wait, we should get another pop-up saying that the provisioning has been successful. So these fabric rolls are now provisioned into our SD access fabric site. We have two border nodes, two control planes and four edge nodes. The next step will be to start to add some layer three virtual networks and any cast gateways. And we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for your time watching. I hope this was helpful. All the best for now.